In this final lesson, I would like to begin by discussing the importance of setting up a dedicated creative space for your art making. I believe it is important, if possible, to set aside a space that is devoted just to the work of creating. There are a number of benefits to setting aside this space. First of all, by having an established space, you remove some of the obstacles to your creative process. Let's face it, sometimes the hardest part of doing anything is just getting started. And if you have to haul out all of your painting supplies and set them up every time you want to paint, that will make it harder to get started. On the other hand, if your supplies are sitting there calling out to you every day, it will be harder to ignore them. The second reason is related to the first. By having a devoted creative space all set up and ready to use, you will just spend more time painting. And the more you paint, the better you will become. It's just as simple as that. And the third reason for having a dedicated space, no matter how small or simple, is that you are saying to yourself and others that this is important to you. When you give something space in your life, you're giving it greater importance. When you create space for something in your life, you're making it a priority. So if you are serious about pursuing watercolor, you will be well served by giving it its own space in your life. So my encouragement to you is to find some space, maybe the corner of a room or even a closet, a spare bedroom or the dining room table. Find an area and claim it for your watercolor practice. Once you have that space, you need to know what to put in it. In previous lessons, we covered the primary supplies you need, the paper, the brushes, the paints, and the palette. In this lesson, we round out the supply list by discussing all the other materials and tools that, you, that will help you get started in watercolor. But I'm not just recommending materials in this list. I also want to share with you how I set up my painting area, where and why I arrange everything the way I do. I share these tips because they are the kinds of things I had questions about when I was getting started. I'm going to start here uh, and kind of go in a clockwise fashion and just talk about everything that I have set, set out here. First of all, I have my easel, I have my board, and I have my, my watercolor paper taped onto that. I am simply using a, a painter's tape uh, that you can get at any hardware store. I have found that to be really the most cost effective and best way to adhere my paper to the board. Placed right here behind my palette is my tablet with my reference image. I like to display it on a tablet in a digital form. I see all the colors that way and it's just a, a great way to refer to my reference image. I always have a little bit of paper towel uh, available here. I like to have that to dry out my brushes. I also have here in my studio all the colors of my current watercolor palette swatched out on a piece of watercolor paper. I like to have that handy for easy reference just again to know what colors I have to choose from. Central here to my painting area, of course, is my palette. This is the Stephen Quiller porcelain palette. It has spaces for 32 colors, and they are situated with yellow at the top uh, in a circular color wheel fashion. My cool colors on the right, my warm colors on the left. Directly to the right of my palette is my water container. I like this Magello water container with three separate containers in it. That way I can have some dirty water in one and clean water in another. And it's nice and big and holds tons of water. It also has this handy brush holder right here in the front. Now directly in front of the water container is a small Tupperware with a sponge. Uh, this is a regular household sponge and I almost always uh, remove water off my brush. Uh, after getting uh, putting the brush in the water here just so I don't get too much water on my brush when I go to my paper. I also like to have right here a uh, towel of some kind and I often will get off excess water off my brush here on the uh, towel as well. The towel also is a nice place to just set my brushes when I'm not using them. It's important to know you never leave your brushes in the water while you're painting. It can damage the brushes. Since we're on the topic of water, I also have a small spritzer bottle that I keep full of water and I occasionally use that to re-wet my paper or to spritz water into certain parts of my painting. 
My entire setup here, of course, is for me as a right-handed person. So everything uh, that I'm using to paint with is to the right of my painting surface, my paper here, because I'm right-handed. I imagine if you're left-handed, you would kind of reverse the setup entirely uh, so everything was on the left-hand side. But you obviously don't want to be going from your palette to your water and be crossing over the paper, like having water and palette on opposite sides of the paper would not be a good setup just because you're going to potentially drip water on your painting surface and there's a lot of wasted motion. So you want to have the water and the palette close to each other on your dominant hand side. And then one more thing I like to do is have a piece of watercolor paper here right in front of the palette where I could test a color. If I'm not quite sure I've got the value or the hue that I want in the painting, I can, as I'm mixing things up, I can come and test that pa uh, paint right here on this paper, uh, which I situate again right in front of the palette. Another handy thing to have in your watercolor studio is an old hair dryer like this that you can use if necessary to quickly dry your painting. Usually I let my paintings dry naturally without the hair dryer, but sometimes this comes in handy. So there you go. That's how I set up my creative space. My hope for you is that you can create a space, whether big or small, and that it will become a place of real encouragement and blessing for you. And once you have it set up, please consider taking a picture and posting it to the Getting Started in Watercolor community. We'd love to celebrate with you as you take this big step towards making your creative process a real priority in your life. And as always, if you have any other questions, comments, or recommendations, please share them in the community forum. I look forward to hearing from you.